we're grateful to God for the opportunity and the ability to to be on this morning. Yeah. Uh, what else did I have to tell you guys? Yeah. This Sunday, not Halloween, Hallelujah Sunday, we welcome our children back. Now remember, parents, that you have to register your children if they're going to be in children's church. Uh, if you if you're bringing an infant, they must sit on your lap. Uh, I don't think we'll have enough seats for, because uh, everyone who's vaccinated can sit next to each other. And so that's fine. And if your child, uh, if you feel like you want to take that risk, I'm, I'm good with it. Just make sure you sign off and say, I'm good with it. <laughs> so... Um, but in children's church, we're only dealing with, I think, four, five-year-olds, I think, or higher. I'm not even sure on that. You have to check with Marty Bell or Elder Nancy. But uh, anyway, uh, I'm glad to be on, as I've already mentioned. And I wanted to sing in Spanish because I haven't sung in Spanish here on a morning in quite a while. I've done a bunch of English songs. And mis hermanos hispanos, bendito. Ellos no se quejan, son gente buena. They don't complain, they're good people. You know, they're just wonderful people. I love them. I love them with all my heart. That and the fact that I'm biased. <laughs> I'm a Latino myself. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's part of the... And let's see, what else is there? Well... I know I thought that we would have the floor done by last Sunday. Well, you know, you, you hope and you project. Maybe by this Sunday it'll be completely done. It, it's all right, because we're dealing with a contractor that had to make room for us because this was an emergency. Well, it was not an emergency, it was an urgency. Amen, and they say it's gonna get a little cooler, so let me tell you something. I preached at my church, and I sweated a little bit. But then on the evening, I went to preach at another church that had air conditioning, and I was soaked, soaked. I mean, it was coming out of, <laughs> I think, I, I, think I, I preached too animatedly. Yeah, that's what it is. Uh, but that's who I am. And, uh, and I love doing that. But let's say good morning to those that are on already. All right. So uh, let's see who's the first one on. Ronnie, Ronnie, you you're always one of the first ones on. God bless you, Ronnie. I think you wanted to speak to me on Sunday, but so many people came up to me, and I think you gave up. Well, I pray that everything is well with you. Amen. And Sylvia's on this morning. God bless you, Sylvia. And Mercedes, God bless you, Mercedes. Thank you. Amen. And uh, Nelson Riverdale. God bless you, Nelson. Always get, yeah, stormy weather. Uh, knocked out your internet, but no, I'm here. Okay, but praise God, it hasn't knocked out ours either. I think it kind of slowed down, right? Slowed down, yeah. I mean, I went out there. I had to go to the street this morning, and I got wet. I think I'm still wet from it. <laughs> uh, anyway, Liz, good morning, Liz. And Karen Torres, God bless them. And Bilma, God bless you. Oh, man, Bilma's leaving us soon. And uh, Chaplain Ray, how are you, Chaplain Ray? Okay, so this is what I needed to announce. This is what I needed to announce. Chaplain Ray is, uh, is a tremendous man of God. He's a good friend. You see him there as John Gons. That's because his, his name is John Ray or Raymond, or John Ramon, or Juan Ramon, who knows who it is, Gonzalez, but uh, I know him as Chaplain Ray. And uh, he got us connected with a Christian food pantry, uh, Man of Life, a wonderful ministry, and uh, we've got to send them our appreciation and send some funds down that way. They have been supplying groceries and foods every Wednesday. It used to be like maybe once a month, then it went every two weeks, and now I guess their blessing has become our blessing. So uh, tomorrow, uh, Elder Jay and the fellas will go and pick up 
and we'll have. And, and I was telling the, the people in the Spanish department that um, last week we had so much that even the people, and especially with this web being this way, if it's this way tomorrow, we'll have less people out in the street. You know, we have to let them in. Uh, but sometimes it gets so crowded that they have to stand outside. And, uh, and with the weather being what it is, it's mostly elderly people. That's, this is, uh, but it's not just elderly people. It's complete families, too. But we want our church people to be aware of it and take advantage of it because we're all in the same boat. We're all in the same boat. And, uh, and I'd like for you to take whatever is given and whatever is too much for you, give it to your neighbor. Use it as a tool of evangelism or just hospitality. Share the love of God with somebody. Amen? And uh, please don't let it rot. Please don't let it rot. Put it in your refrigerators uh, and uh, pack them. Pack them tightly so that they don't, uh, you know, they don't get spoiled. And use them. They're mostly vegetables. Green beans, potatoes, regular potatoes, cabbage, a lot of cabbage. Man, if my father were here, he'd, he'd have a ball. He loved cabbage. He used to make pasteles and wrap them. You know, and back in the day, they didn't have uh, platano leaves and guineo leaves coming over. Goya didn't bring them over. So uh, he, he used, used to eat pasteles in the leaves, so he wrapped them in cabbage leaves. And he loved it so much that it became his signature. Uh, some people don't like cabbage. I love cabbage. I, I love it's lightly sauteed. Lightly sauteed. Not too heavily cooked where it's mushy, but just lightly sauteed in slices. What a good meal that is. Excellent calcium sauce and, and uh, potassium and all kinds of healthy things. So tomorrow, tomorrow morning, um, Sister Doris Bowman and her team, Elder Nancy, they uh, will have a team out there distributing food. Come and help us. You know, even if you don't want it, then come and give us a hand. I thank God for Jason Silverstein, a wonderful brother who's always helping us, and of course, Jose Arbisu, a wonderful worker, and I thank God for them. So thank you, Chaplain Ray. Thank you for all you do. Olga Rodriguez, God bless you, Olga. Sandy Negron, que bueno verte, Sandy. Saludo a Pepin. A Pepe and um, Valerie Friday is there. Oh, yeah, God bless you, Valerie. You're always a blessing to us. Oh, we praise God for that. Amen. So uh, I need to set this up the way we need to set it up. Yeah. Yeah, that's where we're at. Thank you, Jesus. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you this morning for your goodness, your mercies, and your amazing grace. We never take it for granted, oh God. We just thank you. Thank you, thank you. And we don't serve you out of duty, God. We serve you because we love you. And whether people respond or they don't respond, it doesn't affect us because whatever we do, we do for you and for you alone. And to you be all the honor and all the glory. Thank you for Esther. Thank you for all the friends who are on the other side of the screen. Thank you for those who will see it later on YouTube. Thank you for family. I pray for those, oh God, who are struggling with illness, struggling with troubles, need peace in their hearts. We pray, oh God, that you sustain them, that you minister to them, that you heal them. In the precious name of Jesus, amen and amen and amen. Okay, well, let's, let's worship the Lord. I said, I said uh, that I needed to sing in Spanish, so here it goes. I, 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 I think this is, I don't know, I can't remember what key I sing it in. Maybe do. Try C. Hmm. Por la mañana yo dirijo mi alabanza al Dios que ha sido y es mi única esperanza. Por la mañana yo le invoco con el alma 
y le suplico que me dé su dulce calma. Él nos escucha pues nos ama tanto y nos alivia de cualquier quebranto. Nos da su mano poderosa y fuerte para librarnos de la misma muerte. Por la mañana yo dirijo mi alabanza al Dios que ha sido y es mi única esperanza. Por la mañana yo le invoco con el alma y le suplico que me dé su dulce calma. Él nos escucha pues nos ama tanto y nos alivia de cualquier quebranto. Nos da su mano poderosa y fuerte para librarnos de la misma muerte. Cuando la noche se aproxima tenebrosa, en elevarme mi oración, mi alma se goza. Siento su paz inagotable, dulce y grata, para si da Cristo los mata. También elevo mi cantar al cielo cuando la tierra va a negro el sol se oculta, pero que da Cristo aquí en mis ojos en el sueño ha visto. Veo la sangre de sus manos que ha brotado. Veo la sangre borbotando en su costado. Una corona con espinas en su frente, la multitud escarneciéndole solente. Pero qué dicha cuando al cielo sube, lleno de gloria, majestuosa nube. Pero qué dicha cuando al cielo sube, lleno de gloria en maestuosa nube. Por la mañana yo dirijo mi alabanza al Dios que ha sido y es mi única esperanza. Por la mañana yo le invoco con el alma y le suplico que me dé su dulce calma. Él nos escucha pues nos ama tanto, nos da su mano poderosa. Nos da su mano poderosa y fuerte y le suplico que me libre de la muerte. La 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 That's my father's song. La da da da, da 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 da. He had a higher voice than I did. La 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 la, la la da da da. Cause he played it with the mouth harmonica. La 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 la, la 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 la.
la 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 I love my dad I miss him la 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 tough dude la 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 Playing that as the she plays the piano so beautifully. I haven't sung in Spanish so long that I, I I knew those words by heart, but it's been so long that I and then I make them up halfway there when I go. But it also reminds me of a dear sister. She used to be in our Spanish department. She's with Jesus now. She used to sing it all. Here goes another Spanish one. Yeah. Here goes another Spanish one. Hallelujah. Ay, Titi Doris, God bless you. Cansado del camino. Is that a good key? No? Change it. Cansado del camino. Sediento de ti Un desierto he cruzado Sin fuerzas he quedado Vengo a ti Luché como un soldado Y a veces sufrí Y aunque la lucha he ganado Mi alma dura he desgastado Vengo a ti Take it from the top again Let's see if we can get it right Oh, cansado del camino Sediento de ti Un desierto he cruzado Sin fuerza se quedado Vengo a ti Luché como un soldado Y a veces sufrí Y aunque la lucha he ganado Mi alma dura he desgastado Vengo a ti Sumérgeme Sumérgeme En el río de tu espíritu Necesito refrescar este seco corazón sediento de ti. Sumérgeme en el río de tu espíritu. Necesito refrescar este seco corazón sediento de ti sumérgeme en el río de tu espíritu necesito refrescar este seco corazón sediento de ti sumérgeme sí señor en el río de tu espíritu necesito refrescar este seco corazón Sediento de ti Oh, 
cansado del camino sediento de ti un desierto he cruzado sin fuerza se queda vengo a ti oh luché como un soldado y a veces sufrí y aunque la lucha he ganado mi alma dura he desgastado vengo a ti sumérgeme en el río de tu espíritu necesito refrescar este seco corazón sediento de ti sumérgeme en el río de tu espíritu necesito refrescar este seco corazón sediento de ti says if we don't see him there it's because his internet because of course the storm and it's probably stronger out there than up here but we do see you Nelson and of course we love you Clarissa Clarissa Marie that's a pretty name I don't know if I know you do I know you Clarissa maybe you're visiting us for the first time we welcome you to our uh, Tuesday morning Bill Mazan hey man The rest that get to cooking slightly saute. <laughs> ah, you're funny, Bilma. You are funny. <laughs> I'm not going to add to that because I'm already in trouble this morning. Olga says that her first past in Canacion Ramirez used to sing that song all the time. Por la mañana yo diría mi alabanza. She's gone home now to be with the Lord. You know, that uh, I've been thinking about those who have gone home a lot. I, I think about my sister practically every day this year. She died on, on, on New Year's Day. About two to three hours into the new year, my sister passed on to the other side. I think about her every day. I miss her. I missed her before she passed, you know, pandemic. And then, you know, I promised her that I would go see her. And now the only way I can go see her is if I go. And I'm ready. I don't have any problems. I'm not afraid of death. I'm afraid of pain, but I'm not afraid of death. Note the difference. I'm not really even afraid of pain. Did you know that I got my booster yesterday? Yeah, I got a third shot yesterday. And I didn't, like usual, I don't even feel the needle. 
Uh, I've had so many needles in my life, but I don't feel them. You gotta be um, you gotta be really bad if I feel the pinch, because I have just a natural ability to. I, first of all, I pinch myself every day. I take my glucose. No big deal. My wife says she goes like that. It's, 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 it's in your mind. No pain whatsoever. I stub my toe. That's pain. Anyway, I got my. <laughs> I have a, a, a bit of an incident, a really bit of an incident. I had to fill out all kinds of things. I wanted to make sure it was the same, it was the same, um, you know, uh, vaccine as the other two that I had. And of course, here in Connecticut, they do everything brilliantly. You know, it's just fantastic. It's it, it really is a, a well well governed state and. and uh, uh, previous governor was not that good, but this governor now he he uh, he knows what he's doing, and uh, you know uh, New York and Connecticut are always going down the, the uh, you know the there's about seventy percent of the people, and and when I went, I saw all these people. I says, wow, people are getting their booster shots. They're, they're smart. Mostly the elderly. Obviously, you, you, you have to be over 65. If you're not over 65, you haven't lived. <laughs> that just came out. <laughs> that just came out. If you're not over 65, you haven't lived. <laughs> Man, I just slew a whole bunch of people. Anyway, I was just kidding. I'm just being facetious here. But yeah, I qualify because I'm well over 65 and in um, and underlying conditions. I have everything underlined. <laughs> you tell me what I got. I got everything underlined and it's under the blood. But anyway, it was good. I put my phone down. I put my phone down and had to fill out, you know, all these things. You know, they got to do all the, you know, the pandemic thing. You know, no, I'm not sick. I'm no, no, no. They took my temperature, blah, 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 boom. And they gave me my, my papers back. I had to give them my vaccine card and my ID. And I'm so worried about losing my vaccine card and worried about losing my license that I paid more attention to that. Then they gave me a piece of paper and said, go out to the second floor. And I ran up to the second floor. I left my telephone there. And uh, obviously there were people behind me. I was on time. And, and people were behind me. And uh, I didn't realize I didn't have my phone until... You know, you have to wait like 10 minutes after they give you the shot before you could leave. And I'm like, where's my phone? You know, and I was, where's my phone? Oh, gosh. And I went back to the office. It was a wonderful nurse who had injected. She was, I mean, she, I said, how many people have you injected? Because I didn't feel, not even, I didn't even feel your hand. And uh, she says, oh, about three or 4,000. <laughs> I said, thank you for your service. God bless you. And um, have you seen my phone? No. And then I retraced my steps, went back to my car, and, up, and then I remembered. I left it at the table where I registered. When I went back there, it wasn't there. And then I asked the people there, hey, what happened to the phone that I left there? And they, they all played dumb, you know. No, I don't. And then they called it, went straight to voicemail. And uh, so I'm saying, oh, gosh, I lost my phone. You know, when you lose your phone, you lose. I use my phone as my computer. My phones are my books. My phone are, you know, the things that I have to do. My phone is the calendar. My phone is who I'm counseling next. My phone is information that I need for preaching next Sunday. Every day I write a sentence down of what I hear God telling me, and then I formulate on Saturdays, I formulate a sermon that goes right out. And so conversations that I have with people, God speaks to me all day, every day, and, uh, and I put it together. So I, and sometimes when I forget, because I forget a lot of things, so I, I just type like half a phrase and it kicks off. And I have all of that in my notes. And you know, people see me with my phone and they think, oh, this guy, you know, he's on social media. No, I, I don't know what you post on Facebook because I only post on Facebook this program. I don't really use Facebook that much. It's too dangerous uh, and there's a lot of garbage on it. Um, the only social media that I occasionally use is Twitter and uh, really for reading certain people that are important to me, uh, that really bless my life. I, I don't read the garbage and, and very little news. So I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, you know, consumed by it, but I do use my phone as my computer. I write letters on my phone. I have my, my thing there with my stationery. And, and so 
while I'm waiting, I'm doing stuff. So it's it's a, a very important tool. So to think that you lose it, uh, but it's an iPhone, and this is not, you know, this is not uh, a paid announcement. But this is one of the reasons I will always use an iPhone, and that is you can locate your iPhone, and you can actually lock your iPhone, and you can actually put an alarm on it so that the person who took it is hearing it. Ah, ah, this phone ain't yours. Ah, this phone ain't yours. So I couldn't do that because I didn't have anything on me. So I had to get him home and go to my iPad. And the iPad, exactly, I said, it's not in the hospital. Someone took it. Someone took it. It's not too far from the hospital, but it's not in the hospital. It gave me the exact address of the person who took my phone. So I didn't want it. You know, my wife says, are you going to call the police? I said, no, I'm going to call the police. Everybody there was a senior citizen. <laughs> so who am I going to beat up? You know, I'm just going to go and say, give me my phone. I got you. <laughs> you know? But I didn't do that. I asked her to call my phone. And the lady answered, oh, I have your phone. And, you know, I says, I'm a guy with a black hat. I'm running over there. And I couldn't see her house from the street. She had these big trees and I couldn't I'm driving I'm driving I says oh this is terrible I wish I had my GPS I didn't have my GPS because my iPad doesn't work without the uh, connection so um, I, I just parked about three blocks down and I walked and I follow one building one building and then I see that everything is covered and I went in between the trees <laughs> And the police sees me, they'll probably arrest me. I went in between the trees, and lo and behold, there it goes, 313. Wow. And when I go and I ring the bell, because the door was open, but the, it had a, a first door, a glass door, I ring the bell, and when I see her come, I says, I remember you, you were behind me. She was an Asian lady, she barely spoke English well. And I said, I, where did you find it? I didn't say she stole it. I said, where did you find this? She says, no, no. The lady there said, hey, you left your phone. And I just put it in my pocketbook and went to get the booster. <laughs> it wasn't until it started ringing this, this sound of alarm that I realized, I, this is not my phone. And I said, oh, I thank you so much. Her husband came right behind him. She, she was short, like five foot six, and her husband was like six foot seven. And I says, don't worry, sir. I'm so happy. I was ready to offer her money, but he kept looking at me. I says, let me get out of here. <laughs> yeah, but I had my phone. Anyway, if you've had a day like that, then you know that God is with you, and he takes care of you. So I thank God for all of these things and and. and you know, w one of the things that uh, happened this weekend, oh yeah, oh I preached that love of Jesus, oh and I love going over there. And and I had Esther as my driver, I owe her 60 bucks so I gotta pay her. 60? 60. 60. 160. She's saying that's too little. To drive me to New Jersey, I'm gonna get an Uber next time. <laughs> You're charging too much. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> one fifty? No, 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 no. Oh, you cooking today? Oh, okay. So there we go. A dollar fifty. <laughs> okay, we're having too much fun here. Okay, folks, calm down. <laughs> Somebody says they're 67 and they won't admit it. Hey, listen, I admit it. <laughs> People ask me how old I am. I'm my viejo que la guacara, whatever that is. <laughs> what is guacara anyway? I have no idea. Puerto Ricans invent words that don't. They, they have meaning, but nobody knows the meaning is. But it fits. So it's not peor que la guacara. Eso está más lejos que la guacara. And uh, they usually substitute for other words that you don't want to use, so who knows what I'm substituting. May the Lord forgive me. But anyway, I'm having fun, and because I'm having fun, it's because the joy of the Lord is my strength. That doesn't mean I have no problems. I have problems. I have problems with my own family. My own family. I have problems with my own family. Some people in my family cannot deal with me, and one of the reasons they can't deal with me is I'm a straight shooter. I'm a straight shooter, and I don't fool around, not with with other people's health and their lives. 
mine, I don't care what you say about me. That's, that's one of the reasons why I'm a straight shooter, because it really doesn't matter what you say about me, because I'm worse than what you think I am. But God is greater than my worst. Hallelujah. Thank you. That's the scolding Jojo for snoring. She ain't snoring. She's speaking in tongues. That's how she speaks in tongues. She gets blessed. She gets slain. <laughs> anyway, la, 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 la. Andreita, God bless you. <laughs> you're enjoying and relaxing in Daytona Beach, man. We got a storm over here, and you're in Daytona Beach. <laughs> that's not fair. <laughs> no, that's great. I'm glad. I don't want to be in Daytona Beach. I, I, I'm glad I'm where I'm at. Hallelujah. <laughs> Bill Moore says she's like Benjamin Buttons. She's, and she is. She looks young. Yeah, she's going in reverse. <laughs> Anyway, because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say, I worship you. Because of who you are, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. I preach too long. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Jehovah Jireh. My provider, Jehovah Nisi, Lord, you reign in victory, Jehovah Shalom. You're my Prince of Peace, and I worship you because of who you are. Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Because of who you are, I give you glory. I glorify your name, Lord. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Jehovah Jireh, you're my provider. Lord, you reign in victory, Jehovah Shalom. You're my prince of peace, and I worship you because of who you are. And I worship you because of who you are. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord and Savior. Wow. Yeah, I, 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 I spoke a lot this week, and so my, my voice, you know, they said it yet, uh, on Sunday. They said, are you okay? I said, no, it's just 
since my voice is worn out from all the shouting I do when I preach. I can't preach without getting animated. That's why I love teaching. Teaching, I'm calm. Yeah. Anyway, no, I love preaching. I, it's, um, so I was grateful to be at Love of Jesus, and of course I gave them thanks for their their miracle offering. Oh wow, we gotta share this. We gotta share this. Yeah, they 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 gave us a miracle offering, and I, I call it a miracle offering because it ended it ended up being a miracle for them. The ones who were giving ended up getting a miracle. We got the blessing, and they got the miracle. And um, and, and you know. Uh, Pastor Jason Alvarez, what a wonderful man, and his wonderful wife, Gail Alvarez. These, these are just precious people. And uh, he had heard me say in between that our air conditioning had knocked out and, and it's going to cost a whole lot of money because of the last flood. And, <clears throat> and he got up and he said, I just want five pastors to give me $1,000 each, but it's only three because... Gail gave the first first thousand, and then I said I can't be left behind. So he gave his thousand, and so he just needed three pastors to come, and and uh, I think one pastor gave five hundred, another pastor gave five hundred, another pastor gave five hundred, and another pastor gave five hundred, and that's how that's how he gave the five, and they gave me the five thousand, and we're using it to pay our technician and to repair our air conditioning, and uh, thank God that. Uh, if it gets cold, we have heat, so that's the problem. The compressor, we're looking to see if we get better prices and stuff like that. We won't need it really because it's uh, unless we get a heat wave next week, we won't need it. But anyway, um, they're saying it's going to start to chill out. What, what you guys call cold is my favorite weather. I love the 50s and the 40s. Anything, you know, below 40 is a little cold, and way below. 30, well, that's freezing. I don't like that. But between 40 and 60 degrees, that's my favorite. I mean, I love that. That's not cold. That's cool. And I'm a cool dude. I love cool. <laughs> anyway, um, hi, Anna. God bless you, Anna. And Maribel. God bless you, Maribel. Uh, I, I, you guys had a retreat, right? Yeah, we got to hear all about that. Uh, some of our ladies went away to a retreat this past weekend. Anyway, um, so so he he went and testified how um, you know someone had made a mistake and because you know people make mistakes and from one year to five years later they didn't pay a certain you know you know like churches have to pay certain services to the IRS, to, to workers' comp, to, to different things, to the city, to the state. People think that churches are tax-free. They really aren't. They just get the taxes in other ways. And um, there is a, a, an income, you know, federal income tax that we don't pay because we give services to the community. And our church, forget it, we give services to our community. So anyway, um, he had a $313,000 debt. It was more than that, because it had, after 313, I didn't memorize the number, 313,796, something like that. Anyway, uh, you remember? No. Anyway, so they even put the bill right there, and it happened to be that someone was just careless, didn't bring it into the treasury, and they were throwing it out in the garbage, and, you know, it's amazing how, you know, they wait like five years to tell you you owe them three hundred. <laughs> yeah, it is crazy. It is crazy. But he needed a miracle, and God gave him a miracle, and he put it right on the screen. They sent him a letter. You do not owe. Your balance is zero. Zero, zero. And man, wow. Wow. And I said, wow. You know, here's a man was touched by God to help a small church in the Bronx um, get get their air conditioning fixed and he just spontaneously gives and gives and gives and gives and and then the Lord rewards him and it, he had an incredible miracle you know and I say you know we need to learn from him that amazing faith that you give when it hurts you give when it hurts. You give when you don't have. You give. And uh, that becomes that becomes a seed that God 
blesses and multiplies. And uh, so your motivation is the key. What motivates you to give? If, if it's to get, then you got the wrong motivation. But it's to bless and to honor God, then pff, God's got your back. And I've experienced that in my life. I have. And many, many times over. Not to that degree. But uh, I experienced it to the degree of like $125,000. And uh, it was stolen. It was stolen from us, and we didn't even know it was stolen. We didn't know that the bank had approved it, and the broker stole it. And, the God, and God convicted the broker to such a degree that he put a gun to his head, and he called me and says, I stole from you. And I went over and laid hands on him and everything. And, then, and he repaid it, and he went to jail for a few days, and then he, he got off, and he, may the Lord bless him. Uh, but I know what it is, you know, we, we were looking to purchase a building and that was what we needed. And uh, that building is there. My son is the pastor of that building. And La Calle Comerio Antigua de Bayamón. So I've known God to supply, to supply in the thousands and in the thousands. I've not yet experienced the millions. So, you know, that's why I can't die yet because I got to experience that before I go. So... <laughs> So um, anyway, um, I was so blessed. And then, you know, I go into the office and I know something's coming because he called me the day before asking me my shirt size. And uh, so he comes out with this beautiful shirt. I mean, it's an expensive shirt. It's a great shirt. So I think on Sunday, I'm going to wear it on Sunday for sure. And you're going to be, you, <laughs> you guys are going to be, because it's, it's, it's not what you used to me. <laughs> Am I right, Esther? I'm going to look like Jason Alvarez. I wish I could sing like him, but I don't. Anyway, but uh, <laughs> it's uh, definitely a Cuban look. It definitely is a Cuban look. And I loved it. I put it on. when As soon as I got home, I put it on. I said, I'm wearing this. I even got, I even got the message. It's the coat of many colors. <laughs> so I, I know what I'm going to preach on Sunday, the coat of many colors. I, I'm just kidding. But it would be, it would be perfect to preach the Joseph story on Sunday and wear that shirt. And I will wear that shirt. I promise you I will. And, if, and uh, you all better like it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Bring your camera on Sunday. Anyway, um, it is Hallelujah Sunday, right? I'm going to come dressed as uh, Joseph. <laughs> there you go. You, you know, that's the whole deal about Hallelujah Sunday. You're supposed to come dressed as a biblical character. So I am already dressed as Joseph with the multicolored tunic. <laughs> Unbelievable. Perfect, perfect, perfect uh, application. It's just so wonderful. What did I do? Did I... Uh, Oh, Sandy, I posted up there by mistake that you love me. Well, I love you more. Hallelujah. Where is Sandy? So I could take it off because, yeah, I, I must have hit that by mistake. And there you go. There you go. All right. Uh, you didn't tell me that. <laughs> that Sandy's message was on there for a while. Anyway, let's get ready. Let's get ready to rumble. So today we won't we, we won't belabor this too much. We we got stuck last week with the soul exercise. Not stuck, but we, we introduced it, but we didn't have enough time to expand on it. So today we'll expand on it a bit. And uh, let me see if I can get uh, all of this uh, working. Very good. Here we go. Yeah. The soul training exercise is the discipline of radical hospitality. And we, we talked a little bit about it, but uh, what Jesus was, was, was doing in the Sermon on the Mount by, by talking about the poor in spirit, the meek, uh, the persecuted, uh, the ones who were mocked the ones who were outcast and marginalized. And, and then we add to it the people that he laid hands on, the lepers and the people he ate dinner with, prostitutes and tax collectors, which are considered the lowest of the low. And he says, theirs is the kingdom of God. And so Jesus was practicing radical hospitality. Radical hospitality was welcoming 
the stranger or the person who's so unlike you um, and and perhaps even marginalized by society, not perhaps, but definitely marginalized by society, and welcome them and treat them with love. And uh, we talked about how this is an important uh, trait to cultivate. And you know that John, uh, uh, James Bryan Smith's method in cultivating the spiritual life is to t learn what Jesus says, replace your thinking with his thinking, and then practice it, practice it. So after so many lessons, we get a chance to practice it. So one thing we learn from this is that God deeply cares about those who are left out, those who are marginalized. And, and in our church, we, we focus on the homeless, and uh, we have one former homeless who came back home yet uh, Sunday, uh, our brother Eddie Kirkland. There was a time when Eddie didn't have a place to lay his head, and uh, he stayed with Mario, and uh, we haven't been able to communicate with Mario. I, I'm thinking that he, he doesn't know how to charge his phone, so that may be one of the reasons. Uh, but Mario at one time had an apartment. He was homeless and didn't know, and we got him an apartment. And then when Eddie became um, um, homeless, then he stayed with Mario for a little while, and then we got him an apartment. I, you know, we didn't get him. We, we lined them up with social services, and they qualified. They did everything we asked them to do. You know, we helped them get the papers. And I thank God for Nicola and for Elder J and and for different people who, uh, what's his name, uh, Pat, Pat, what's his name, that's terrible, you should never say that, Pastor Gene, Pastor Gene helped Eddie, because Eddie is a veteran, he served in the military, and so he got some helps a little faster by, by being a veteran, and he has a place to lay his head, he really does, and, and we hadn't seen him in almost, a, definitely a year and a half, almost two years because of the pandemic, and, uh, you know, he, he, he watch us. I'd see him and he'd send greetings, but he wouldn't come to church no matter what. And, uh, of course, he's vaccinated, so there was no reason except that, you know, when you, when you get used to not going, that becomes a habit. It becomes a pattern. And so we, we tell people, hey, sign up and come. You know, or you, you don't even have to be vaccinated. You just don't, you, you shouldn't be sick. That's all. If you're sick, stay home. Let us know. We'll pray for you. You know, but if you're not sick, come and uh, and definitely wear your mask. And so, you know, these people are very important to us. And we've helped homeless through the years, through the years, helping them, taking them to hospitals, feeding them. And of course, the faith ministry, um, feeding and interceding for um, the homeless. That's the acronym F -I F A I T H. Uh, feeding and interceding for the homeless, uh, led by uh, Brother Mitch, Sister Judy, and Brother Gary Vaughn. Um, they, they, they have, you know, taken every month to go and feed, you know, as a matter of fact, we, we haven't been able to get the, um, the permission to serve food because where we meet is in private property. So, we had to get a special permit to, to even do it there. And uh, and the city requires that if you give out food, the Department of Health has to um, give you permission. So we're working on that, and we're going to get it, definitely. But uh, So we don't have a date yet for November. But we've been doing this for years now, and in the winter... You know, when we didn't go out there with food, we go out there with, well, we went out there with peanut butter sandwiches or whatever, ham and cheese, whatever, uh, salami and cheese. Uh, and, and But mostly we went out there with uh, covers, you know, with coats, with shoes, with socks. And um, I purchased over 200, over 200 NASA um, developed sleeping bags that had this ability to cover you 100% and it's thermal so that the body heat stays inside and so no matter how cold it is outside it's warm inside and that went like hotcakes and people still see them using it and we'll probably get another 100 more for this winter if we really need it because it looks like it's going to be summer right into January so um, the, the, thing, the thing is that um, we minister to these people so this is very very, very much part of the vision 
of Circle of Christ Church. Our theme verse is the Spirit of the Lord has anointed me to, to preach good news to the poor and the brokenhearted and the captives and the blind and declare and proclaim the favorable year of our Lord. So that's, a, that's our driving message, you know, to preach, preach the gospel to those who are in desperate conditions. So we are always inclined to look for the desperation cases. And so uh, because we've learned from Jesus that he cares deeply about the marginalized, the outcasts. Uh, so you can't get more outcasts than, than lepers and, and publicans, tax collectors. Our society marginalizes people all the time. The American society is a very, very biased society against the poor and against the, the uh, what, what's going on there? Uh, yeah, uh, some, some message came through. Uh, our society marginalizes people who, um, you know, who don't have the right color, uh, or you don't have the right education. Uh, we have sections in the Bronx, can you believe this? In the Bronx, we have sections in the Bronx where a person of color can't rent an apartment. And that, you know, that has been going on for years and years and years and years. And uh, there's still, there's still some places that do it and some, you know, groups of people who don't want that kind of living in my neighborhood. So this is, this is not something that's just the biblical times. This is something that is even present today in the United States of America, the land of the free. And so, you know, living in the kingdom of God involves loving others because our king is a God of love. He's a God of love and he loves all people and especially the downtrodden. He came for sinners. He is a friend of sinners. And his followers were the people who didn't wash their hands before they ate. So they, they try to get Jesus in trouble for that. So the Beatitudes involve us in the life of the kingdom. So when, when we read the Beatitudes, he's saying, this is the kingdom. This is the kingdom. So it involves us in, in the life of the kingdom. So we, we got to be looking for people who are hungry and thirsty. We have to be looking for people who are poor in spirit. We have to be looking for people who are mocked and persecuted because these are the people that Jesus invites to the kingdom of God. And so these Beatitudes involve the life of the kingdom of God. And living in the kingdom involves forgiveness giving others uh, because our king is a god of forgiveness uh, it doesn't mean that you know the lepers stayed leper no he healed the lepers the tax collectors stayed tax collectors no he transformed matthew he transformed zacchaeus they they gave back their riches they paid whom they stole and they followed jesus and they picked up their cross so there's a change that takes place but he's saying the first ones to get an invite are the people who don't reject me, the people who accept me, the people who don't accept me will be left out. And he gives several parables about a man who threw a feast and gave invitations to all the elite and they didn't show up. So then he said, hey, you know, go out to the highways and the byways and invite them to come in. So this is exactly how Jesus explains the the. The, the Beatitudes in the Sermon of the Mount through those parables. So in the same way, living in the kingdom of God involves hospitality, inviting and including others that maybe some churches would not invite, that maybe some societies would look down on, that maybe some people would reject because of their ethnic biases, their radical um uh, um, and, and this goes for every ethnic place you know, because um, a lot of people are not racist because they're not in power, but they're racialist. They, they favor one race over another, you know, and that's just as bad. It, it, you know, that's individual. Racism is a system. So there's a system that keeps certain people out. But racialism is, hey, I favor Puerto Ricans. That's racialism. I, you know, I'm biased towards them because I am one. And that gives me a natural love for them. Paul had that. He loved his people. Moses had that. He loved his people. God gave Moses an opportunity to let his people die and he'll start all over with his. And he said, no way, no way. I won't accept that. And Paul said, I love the Jews so much that I would, that God would put me in the line of the cursed and let Israel enter into the kingdom of God. You can't love more than that. That's a Jesus kind of love. That's exactly what Jesus did. Lord, put the sin and the weight of sin on me and save sinners. That's what Jesus did. That's the love of God. And so 
to be a member and a participant of kingdom living means to include people who are excluded. And because our king is a God of hospitality, we need to exercise and cultivate hospitality. And it's one thing that we very rarely hear. Why is uh, practicing hospitality so difficult for us? That's where I left off last uh, last Thursday or last Wednesday, rather. Uh, it is because it often takes us out of our comfort zone. You know, if people come knocking on the door, and I'll tell you, this is the these are these are true facts. People come knocking on the door to come in. You know, we welcome them in. I've had I've had people who wanted to come in and welcome them in. And you know, you got my daughters. First of all, JoJo has every toy in the world all over the place. Uh, we got coats hanging on the on the stairwell. <laughs> There's books on the table. Uh, uh, don't even go upstairs. We we got a. a, a an outdoor hamper my my kids forget it they're teenagers you don't want to go into that room it's scary and uh, and esther is busy so she cleans you know once a week she goes all crazy and then but we, we dirty in two minutes it's that's the way it is so some people are not good at, at, at hospitality because they want to give the best impression someone's coming to our house i have to clean i have to, I have to cook i have to serve them and so some of us have never cultivated hospitality and uh, I don't care about none of that stuff. It doesn't make no difference to me. I, I tell them, listen, pardon the mess, you know, and, and usually people say, you should see my house. <laughs> That's what they usually say. We're all in this together. And in the pandemic, oh my God, some people were wearing the same, same sweatpants for two months. They were walking by themselves. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's true come on anyway <laughs> oh lord oh jesus I, I i see what people are saying they're probably thinking I, I i took something this morning but it's the truth man we 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 have this you know i'm afraid you know it like like if like if my wife's sister came who cares if it's clean she's family right if my son came from virginia who cares? I, you know, we, you know, he had to isolate here. He came to visit me during the pandemic and he could not walk out that door for like a week because Connecticut said, e if you're not vaccinated and they weren't, if you're not vaccinated, because they couldn't get vaccinated, the vaccine was not available. So if you're not vaccinated and you don't have a negative test, they couldn't take one because, you know, they left and it was not available because in the beginning we had no, I couldn't take a test for like 10 months. I, I donated blood. That's how I knew I didn't have it. So uh, the, the, the thing is, they, they came and they spent the whole week here in this little room, sleeping on the floors and sofas and eating in a, because my apartment is very small. And so we're eating all over the place. And I had a bunch of kids. Esther was brilliant. She's a genius. She, the, the, the pool here was closed. It's a pandemic. So she parked all the cars outside and converted our garage into um, uh, a resort. I mean, I literally a resort. She literally made, she decorated the walls as if she was in Puerto Rico. There were palm trees, everything, beach. She got a, a, a big, a big pool. I mean, I'm talking about maybe, you know, 50, 60 gallons of water pool in the garage with, with beach chairs all around. And these kids spent that week in there jumping up and down, water all over the place. It's the garage floor, who cares? And they had a one, because they couldn't go outside because if they went outside, they would have to pay a summons for being outdoors uh, and not being from Connecticut. And so, you know, that meant we cooked every day and we ordered food, they delivered, we, you know, we had a ball. It was fantastic. And I had my grandchildren here, all of them except for the ones from Puerto Rico. Uh, um, so, you know, that, that, was, uh, that was something that, that we had to be creative on. And to show hospitality even now. It's dangerous to have people come into your house. You don't know if they're vaccinated. And even if they're vaccinated, you don't know if they're high risk. They're high risk. You know, uh, this great, tremendous American hero who died the other day, um, Colin Powell. Colin Powell was regarded one of the most highly regarded people 
ever. I mean, he was the first uh, African-American Secretary of State. He was the chief uh, of, of the armed forces. And uh, he successfully, successfully did the Iraq, the first Iraq war that got uh, uh, Iraq out of Kuwait. And he was just a brilliant man. You know, I know that a lot of people look down on him because of the second Iraq war. And uh, certainly I think he made a mistake there. But at any rate, at any rate, you know, he's from the Bronx, man. <laughs> he's, a, he's a boogie down. And he's an example of a man with integrity, a man who loved his wife, and a man who was so good. And he was vaccinated, fully vaccinated, and he died of COVID. But what people don't know is that he, he was fighting cancer. He had cancer, and he had Parkinson's, two conditions that repressed the immune. So he lived as long as he did because of the vaccine. He probably would have been dead earlier. Uh, that's what they don't they don't say and uh, so yes uh, you know it's hard to invite people into your house and there was a couple in church that I said as soon as this thing goes I want to invite you they just got married uh, the guitar player and Lala Ben Ben and Lala you know I says you know what you just got married I didn't even you know you didn't invite me to your wedding I, I right away I'm a straight shooter I embarrass people you know, you don't want to be embarrassed. Don't talk to me too long. Um, right? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, my wife says, you said that? I says, yeah, I was joking. They knew I could. You didn't read my face. You know, I was kidding. And I told her, I was only kidding. You know, I'm glad you're married. And congratulations. You know, but I says, you know, I got to invite you over to our house so we could cook, you know. And, and they said, yes. But I said, well, when we get through, because, you know, right now, Kaylin is not vaccinated. She's too young. And I can't risk it. She's, she's back in school. And uh, and so we are, we're always conscious of the fact that Kaylin lives in this house. You know, everybody else in this house is vaccinated except Kaylin. And so Kaylin is that important. So I can't be having, you know, people coming in and out of this house, even though this house always has people coming in and out because Kaylin brings all her friends in and out. <laughs> but they're all in the same boat. You know, they're from the neighborhood. God knows we make all kinds of exceptions. But the thing is very hard to practice hospitality. One of the beautiful things that I'm teaching my daughter is that she, she always asks, can Sophie come in and play? Can Olivia come in and play? I says, absolutely. Never say no. Her mother sometimes says no because she's doing things. But when she's asking me, listen, have fun. Thank God, you know. And they're here at dinner time, and I'm giving, I'm giving uh, a Kaylin dinner. And I look at Sophie and Olivia. I says, you want to eat? And they say, yeah. And so I have to make dinner for them. You know, mac and cheese for Sophie, mac and cheese for Olivia, mac and cheese. And, you know, and, and you know what? The same thing goes when Kaylin's over at Sophie's house at dinner time. They feed her. They feed her because it's a back and forth thing because we're hospitable people. And, you know, we take care of her. I've ta- I have on a daddy-daughter date, I have taken Sophie with us. I take him to the ice cream parlor and pay for her ice cream. And her father knows it and her mother knows it because, you know, we're neighbors. And, and because we're good neighbors and we're comfortable. It's hard to do it with someone you don't know because, first of all, the parents have to get permission. So this happened the other day. This happened the other day. Um, it, it was, a, it was, it, it was a, a good case of uncomfortable feeling. Uh, Kaylin says to, to um, Esther, can I go to... Can I go to my friend's house? They're going to cut a cake for her. They'd have, they have no children uh, in the house because of the pandemic. It's just the mother and the father, and she invited me to be there to cut the cake. And I want to say happy birthday for her because she's my Roblox friend. They play Roblox all day, every day, whenever they're free. And, uh, and Esther said, I don't know their parents. I can't let you go to a house whose parents I don't know, which she's right. She's absolutely right. I thank God I trust my wife enough because she's not going to let them go to someone and not know their phone number, their name, in case something happens. you got to. And so she, my wife knows the, the kids that Kaylin plays with. She knows all their parents, and she has their numbers so that if they want to go to each other's house, we know where to find them. Well, the thing is that Esther couldn't. Esther had a, a daughter, mother-daughter date with Rosita, and she couldn't go. And so, oh, God, you know what happens. Oh, Daddy, could you take me to a birthday party? 
And I'm like, I got a lot of work to do. I got to study for theology. I got to prepare some notes. I got to type. And she looked at me with those puppy eyes like Jojo does. Oh, please, Daddy. And I overheard. I overheard them saying that the parents were from Honduras. As soon as they said that, I said, you know what? Just one hour. <laughs> Just one hour. Cut the cake and come home, right? Yeah, it turned out to be like two and a half hours because the mother went to get the cake and it was specially prepared by a friend and she got stuck in traffic. So I was parked outside the house for a good 40 minutes. And I'm like, oh, this is not what I was thinking. But anyway, to make a long story a little less long, uh, <laughs> they, they, they were ready and the girls went in through the back. And, and I'm walking, I'm walking down the driveway, and the mother's there, and I said, hello, I'm Kaylin, yo soy el papá de Kaylin. She says, oh, entra por el frente, porque por acá es la cocina. And what she was saying is, I don't want you to look at my kitchen, and this is the answer. The kids can go through. Why don't you go through the front? I says, absolutely, absolutely. So I walk to the front, and I'm waiting, and I'm waiting, and they, and they open their home. It's a very humble home. It looks just like this one, uh, you know, very tidy, clean, but different things. She sells things, you know, she sells things, mm -hmm. yeah, and she had better lights than these. Mm -hmm. She has those big lights, and she's on Facebook Live. I'm saying, man, these Hondurans are amazing. She barely speaks English. Oh, uh, she speaks English. Her husband doesn't speak English. She introduces me to her husband who's in the kitchen. He just goes like this, like he's like shy. And I'm like, oh, hola, como esta? I let them know I speak Spanish and I didn't speak English there. And the girls went to play in their room with the Roblox. They didn't have internet, so I gave my, my daughter my phone so they could do internet. And the whole, well, they did have internet, but they didn't know the password and it was too far. And so the, the kids were playing in a room and they didn't, and so she took my phone and did a hotspot. Those of you who know technology understand what that is. So anyway, I'm sitting there and I'm talking to her. She's sick. She is sick. The woman has a migraine. And she's telling me, you know, the only thing that relieves my migraine is throwing up. So if I have to run, please excuse me. Her husband went out. He went out. It's just her, the kids in the room. And she went to the bathroom and I'm like sitting there. And I'm looking, you know, okay, here we go. And then she, she threw up, and she was better. She was better. She sat there. I says, wow, this woman really understands her body. So um, she was fine. And then I started telling her that I've been to Honduras, and I started telling her this. And she said, and then the husband came, and, and I says, you know, usted sabe dónde está Tocoa Colón. Yo he predicado en Tocoa Colón. Uh, do you know where Trinidad is? Oh, sí, en la Trinidad. Santa Bárbara. Yeah, I've been there. And I says, hey, and I went on mule back, crossed the river 11 times, and we established the church in Sabá, en Aguas Caliente. Oh, that's far. We've never been there. We don't know where that is. So I know more about the country in terms of all the places. And, uh, and I'm telling them. And they said, well, how, why? I said, I was a missionary. I'm a pastor. And, and, and they said, oh, wow. And you know what? When it came time to sing happy birthday, they finally got the cake. The, the lady said, would you pray for my daughter? That was beautiful. And that's what I'm trying to tell you. So they were being hospitable to me, but I was being hospitable to them by making them comfortable with this stranger, this weird-looking old man, stranger coming into their house, a man instead of a mother coming. It's a dad. And um, and I told her, I says, anytime your daughter wants a play date with Kaylin, just talk to my wife. She can come over and play. Uh, you know, and she was like, oh, this is so wonderful. And then we began to talk about the Lord. And I ministered the gospel to them, and they were open. It was tremendous. You have to go outside your comfort zone. So Esther said, no, you can't go because I don't know the mother. But I said, I'll go and meet the mother. I not only met the mother, I met the father, and I met the uncle. And I greeted them in Spanish, and I blessed them, and I prayed with them. And... Now, Kaylin can go to a friend's house or that friend can come here and the gospel was shared. Hospitality is an opportunity to evangelize. 
And when you work it well, and I'm telling you, uh, I know it's hard in, during the pandemic to invite people to your home. So I'm, I'm going to give you some different things. But anyway, I just want you to know that it's biblical. First Peter 4, 9 says, be hospitable to one another without complaint. You know, I, I, <laughs> I'm not going to rat on Esther. So somebody, somebody else, not Esther, you know, uh, you invited them, you cook. You invited them, you serve. You invited them, you prepare the table. <laughs> a, not Esther, she's very hospitable. Somebody else. And, um, and, as, and the Bible says, be hospitable without complaint. You know, you treat people the way you want to be treated. When I go to people's houses, they ask me if I want coffee. Sometimes I say yes, sometimes I say no. Because I don't drink coffee like I used to drink coffee. The most I drink coffee is twice a day. Most of the time, only once a day. Sometimes I'll drink tea instead at night. And uh, certainly I love to drink water. I've become a water fanatic now. And that's one of the reasons I'm losing weight. I'm not on a diet. I'm just drinking water, 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 water. And I'm, you know, obviously I'm getting rid of it. So uh, I've lost about... Um, <sighs> This morning was 233, 250. I'm, I, I've lost almost 20 pounds, almost 20 pounds, maybe even more. Anyway, be hospitable to one another without complaint. And the word hospitable is a fantastic word. I want you to look at this. This is not in the book. This is something that Pastor Sam gives extra. The, the word, the Greek word uh, is philosenia, philosenia. And it's, comp it's a compound word. That means it's, it's one word connected to another. And that's the Greek word for hospitality in the English translation is philo. Philo or philo mean, philos means love. It means brotherly love. The love, this, this is the emotional love that you feel for your wife, that you feel for your sister, that you feel for your children, that you feel for your grandmother, that you feel for your friends, uh, for people who treat you really well. This is a brotherly love. It's, it's, the, it's the most affectionate word greek word for love the most e affectionate greek word for love not agape but philos and senia xenia comes from this, the greek word xenos and you, you've heard the word xenophobic that means fear of strangers senia means strangers so the word hospitality literally literally means lovers of strangers to love a stranger. How are you going to love a stranger? You don't know them. And yet the Bible says to be hospitable without complaint. Well, we were strangers to Jesus and he loved us. And, and you, know, you know, for a long time, for a long time, God was a stranger to many of you. But he loved you anyway. And he inculcated in the Jewish construct of their law, the Torah, that you should treat foreigners well because one time you were a foreigner. And uh, I know that goes against the grain in America. America hates, uh, you know, they hate poor people that come in without documents and all that stuff. And it's horrible what we've become as a nation. It used to be that the Statue of Liberty said, send me your, your tide, whatever. And we don't, we don't practice that anymore. And uh, we complain that too many criminals come, but we, you know, we... We produce a lot of criminals. I'm sure there's a lot of criminals, American criminals in Canada, and a lot of American criminals in Mexico, and a lot of Amer American criminals all over the world. I mean, we, you know, we, you know, the mafia is here. You know? So anyway, philosenia, philosenia means to love strangers, and so what? What? Um, to be a lover of strangers is, is it's a grace, it's a grace, it's a virtue. It's the ability and grace to entertain because you're entertaining them. That means you're hosting them. We use the word entertain, not, you know, do comedy sketches. No, to entertain is to bring them in, have a seat, have the visitor's seat, which is the main seat. Uh, can I serve you? What would you like? If they're staying in your house, you, you prepare a, a towel and a hand towel and you show them where the bathroom is and you prepare and you actually give them a soap. You don't let them use the soap that we have. You, you, you give them a new soap. That's hospitality. You ask what they eat and what they cannot eat. And that's what you prepare. Because if you prepare something that they don't eat, 
they're going to be forcing themselves to eat and they can get sick and maybe they're allergic to something. You know, if I, you know, I prepare peanut butter sandwiches and then I get somebody who comes <laughs> and peanut butter sandwiches. Hey, don't talk about that. That's filet mignon at midnight. <laughs> at midnight when you get the, you know, the, the hungry, yeah, yeah, yeah. The snacks, peanut butter and jelly. I mean, that goes down like a steak. Anyway, and they're allergic to peanut. You could be killing them. So you ask. You ask, listen, what is it that you do eat and what you don't eat? I don't want to prepare something for you that you cannot eat. And and tell them, say no if you don't like it. Say, I don't want, I don't want to force you to do something just to please me. I need to please you. What would you like? Oh, just water. But many of them are just really, really humble. And uh, sometimes they're just humble because they, they, they're they uncomfortable too. And so you say, well, I'm going to put some crackers and, and, you know, some generic stuff and cheese and stuff. And here's some juice and, and, and here's tea, hot tea, if you want to serve yourself tea. Oh, I think, yeah, yeah, I like it. What kind of tea is that? Oh, that's my red zinger, which is really tasty, which is hibiscus tea. Uh, with lemon and oh they love it oh wonderful wonderful great 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 yeah i go to people's houses and they're making pasteles do you want any uh, of course i do muerto quiere misa <laughs> i got no problem with saying yes to pasteles but anyway and uh, by the way you know that the ones that uh, alina made me pasteles on sunday and she gave me some don't tell anybody they were the best she's ever made they were so good. that was my dinner yesterday anyway um it was beautiful that that kind of hospitality and um jesus is focusing on that well we're not always comfortable with what with that because we enjoy people that like us or who share a common bond with us it's easy to invite friends you know um uh, I got friends. William Palmer came to pick me up the other day. William Palmer's been here. He goes in and out. It doesn't make a difference. Danny Adorno, uh, he's my kid's godparents. He can come anytime he wants. The house is a mess. I don't care because we're like brothers and family. So it's easy to be hospitable to them. You know, they can say, I don't want to eat that. Could you got something else? <laughs> Sometimes they come with it. It says, cut me what I brought. And I says, okay, that's wonderful. So what I'm saying is we like to to be hospitable with people we're comfortable with. But Jesus cultivating hospitality to the radical, the kind of Jesus type of hospitality requires us to take chances. Now being hospitable doesn't mean, and, and uh, I should have put doesn't, and, it do, and I wrote does mean. No, so that's wrong. So it does not mean Okay, I'm going to say it again. Being hospitable does not mean to put yourself in danger or lack common sense. Uh, you're going to invite some crazy guy in the street, come on in. Uh, my mother did that a couple of times, but, you know, she had the Holy Ghost on her. Jesus said, be wise as serpents and gentle as a dove. So if you see someone who's, who's risky, you know, you say hello and, you know, you get to know them. There's a guy, I'm, I'm figuring out, there's a guy here in, in my neighborhood that I'm going to reach. The Holy Spirit has been telling me, go over to that guy, go over to that guy, go over to that guy. But he's very put offish. He, he, you know, I say hi and then he says hi. I could walk right by and if I don't say hi, he doesn't say hi. He doesn't even look at me. It's almost like he, he thinks I don't like him. So sometimes I just stare at him until he looks up and says, hey, what's up? And he'll say, all good. How about you? And I says, really good. You know, and, uh, but he's handicapped. And, and I, and I don't know if he's temporarily handicapped or if he's totally handicapped. So I'm like, oh, one of these days, man, one of these days I gotta, I gotta figure out, you know, something that I could give him. Um, because even though he puts me off, I know it's because he doesn't know that I care. He doesn't know. He sees me as a stranger. So he's uncomfortable. Who's that guy? Who's that guy? Who's that guy? So. The grace of hospitality makes evangelism so much easier, better, and effective. When we share love with a stranger or someone you don't really know, you begin with the love of God. You begin with the love of God. Being hospitable does not mean to put yourself in danger. No, but you can 
Be hospitable with a stranger. If you come with the love of God. Now, sometimes you come with the love of God. I remember one time we were giving out tracts, not we, Circle of Christ Church, John 3.16. In John 3.16, we'd go out at midnight to give out tracts, right? And one, and one guy, I remember his name was Eddie. Eddie gave a tract to a guy who was out there. And he says, Jesus loves you, you know? And I love you too. He says, yeah, if I stab you, will you love me? You know, <laughs> and I got you like, mm, he turned around. And when we come back to debrief, he says, man, I had a, a doozy, man. I went over to a guy and said, Jesus loves you and so do I. He says, yeah, well, if I stab you, will you still love me? And like, he got caught off guard. You know, sometimes you got to work it. You got to work it. But you know, let me tell you, there's a great book, a bestseller, New York Times bestseller called The Cross and the Switchblade. And uh, when you're anointed and you're sent by God, like David Wilkerson was, he went right up to the head of the Mau Mau's, Nikki Cruz. And he was getting on his nerves. He kept trying to reach him. And, re and, and Nikki was rejecting, rejecting. He hated him. He despised him. He eventually got convicted by him. So one time they ran into an alleyway, I think it was, or something like that. And, and Nikki was so mad. He says, preacher. You know, and, you know, he's saying, Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you, Nikki. Jesus loves you. And uh, and he says, you know, preacher, man, I'm getting so fed up with you. I'm going to cut you into a hundred pieces right here. And David Wilkinson said, if you cut me into a hundred pieces, each piece will be saying, Jesus loves you. And so do I. And that radically, t Nikki couldn't deal with it. You had to run. The conviction of the Holy Spirit was so powerful. You got to make sure you're anointed when you run into people like that. But what I'm saying is that that kind of radical hospitality is powerful in evangelism. It is powerful in the faith ministry. People love Judy. Judy Weber is a, 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 a humble magnet. She draws people to her who are really down and out people who don't have limbs, people who sleep on the floor and she'll get down with them and she'll take their hand and she'll pray with them and she'll give them new clothes and feed them something. She's my Teresa de Calcutta from our church. Judy Weber is just walking love and she has no problem with their smell, their stench, their appearance, their their. Um, disorientedness they look like they and they are mentally ill but there's something so sweet and kind about her and I've seen you know and I know Mitch goes through you know he goes through changes because sometimes uh, Judy leaves the group and she's going out there looking for someone in particular and he's out there like, yeah, where's my wife? Where's my wife? You know, because, you know, there's people, they're bad people out there on 148th Street, you know, they're, they're not the nice people. So, um, you know, and and he knows, he knows that she, God just uses her. And then she, why did she, she went after a person that she had promised something to, couldn't find it and then found it a shoe size, a particular size, and then went looking for them to bring it to them. Sometimes she's gone three and four blocks and finds them and brings it to them, letting them know that Jesus loves them enough to walk the four blocks and bring it to them. That kind of love is the God kind of love. That kind of love. And uh, the grace and hospitality that makes evangelism easier and better and more effective when we love when we share love with a stranger or someone you don't really know you begin with the love of God for mankind I don't know you but I know God loves you because he loved me the challenge is to show hospitality and here's the bad part and we'll get into this tomorrow we got to finish now the challenge is to show hospitality to people we already don't enjoy being in their presence that person really puts me off that person's every time I say hello, looks at me like I'm dead. That person has gossiped about me. I am famous for saying hello to people who talk horrible about me. Because I figured they don't know what to answer. They don't know why I'm being kind to them. Because the Bible says, overcome evil by doing good. And by doing so, you heap hot coals of fire over the head. Wow, and I believe in that verse, and it's so powerful. I have made people who were former enemies, people who didn't like me, 
be my friends. They, they care for me now. They look for me. Uh, they don't remember anything that put them off. Um, that's hard to do. It really is. I have a friend who cannot do that. I have a minister friend who has not learned the secret of getting people who dislike him to let him have a space to breathe. And it takes constancy, and it takes a thick skin, and it takes bless them that curse you, 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 bless them that curse you. That's how uh, a Nicodemus and a Joseph of Arimathea and a Paul, who was stone-cold Pharisees, became followers of Jesus because Jesus kept loving them and loving them and loving them. It's hard. You got to make a plan. Sometimes, you know what I do? I bless them anonymously. There's one person that I bless. There's, no, there's about three people. Three people that I bless anonymously. They don't know that it's me. I make sure the person says, I hold them to the promise. Don't tell them this came from me. Tell them it came from you. I'm giving it to you. You give it to them. Uh, sometimes I anonymously give to a church for the purpose of giving to so-and-so. So it has to go through the treasury and they have to give it to so-and-so and they don't know who to, it, it, the person who's receiving is receiving it from the church. What church? Not my church. I go to a church and I put an offering there. This particular offering is for someone. And I, I do it in cash or, or a gift card, something that does not have my name on it. You know why I do that? I don't, they, they don't know it's me, so they're not benefiting. They're not getting better because of it but it protects my heart from becoming hateful. It protects my heart from becoming retaliatory. It keeps the venom out of my heart. I see someone who doesn't like me and I say hi to them. I go up to them and I start a conversation with them. They say, well, you get cari pelao. Well, yeah, I, I lost my cari pelao a long time ago. Jesus gave me a new face. Jesus gave me a new love. He gave me a new heart. So in the most difficult cases to exercise the soul is this one. So when we demonstrate kindness to a friend, Jesus says, we're no better than the Gentiles. Anybody does that. Someone will give their life for their friend. Yeah, that's easy. It's when you don't have the power and the grace of the Holy Spirit that you do that. But when you have the power of the Holy Spirit and the grace of the Holy Spirit, you just die. That's all I do. I say, I'm going to die. They're going to curse me out, so I'll, so I'll die. You go to die. That's all you got to do. Just go to die. Oh, you such and such a... Amen. God bless you. Forgive me. Amen. God bless you. Forgive me. You go and die. That's it. That's all you could do. As a matter of fact, I'm planning to do that in the next week or so. Because nothing good comes out of the challenges. And I even have family I have to do that with. Sometimes the biggest problems are our own family got no problem they got a problem with God <laughs> not with me I don't have the problem I don't have the problem so I pray and I seek the Lord and I protect my heart I protect my heart I give anonymously that's how I do it I give anonymously and I got a few tricks that you can never figure out who it is I ain't giving out that trick. In case you're out there listening, I'm not going to give you my tricks. I know how to do this. <laughs> my wife is telling me. <laughs> she wants to go out somewhere. Hey, man. When I encounter a person who's out and out repugnant, and I have, towards me, I pray and ask God to protect my heart from hate or bother. And then I look for ways to bless them anonymously first blessing I do <laughs> man Jojo's Jojo as soon as I said that I, sh, the Holy Ghost came on Jojo <laughs> Jojo's shaking there man the Holy Ghost came upon her man she just woke up and she started shaking woo, woo, woo. <laughs> Jojo Jojo you know I'm talking the truth pray Pray a blessing for them rather than become retaliatory. Pray a blessing for them 
the minimum you could do is pray for them. Yeah. Look for ways to show hospitality without necessarily gaining any credit for it. You could do it. God bless you. God bless you. Well, today we're praying for, obviously, those who are, who are in need. We always pray for Evelyn LaBoy. I think she'll be starting chemo soon if she hasn't started already. Mildred Espinosa, she needs a miracle from God. She really does. She needs a major miracle from God. Inesita Frank Gurdy's on. You know who, who's a great hospitality guy? It's Frank. Frank knocks on the doors of his neighbors and checks in on them. That's how he won one, one of his neighbors to the Lord. Maribel's grandson, Esther Neal, Larry Neal's wife. She needs a miracle. Jovan is leaving to Florida tomorrow. On Friday, they are planning to take her, his mom off the respirator. And so he will be there when she passes. We, the church, gave him some money so that he could go. He's unemployed right now, so I sent him some money yesterday. So he's going to rent a car today and drive down with his son. He was hoping to take his daughters, but I don't know. But he's going to say goodbye to his mom. He's going to pray for her. And then he's trusting that whatever God wants, he's ready for. He has a brother who doesn't serve the Lord. And that's the real reason he's going down, because he already said goodbye to his mom. The real reason is because his brother needs Jesus. And so he's going down to minister to his brother. I pray for my sisters, Ruthie and Rosie, for my brother, Jorge David. They need healing, they need strength, and they need a miracle. Pastor Raul, what a victory. Beverly Peterson's son, Keith. Valerie Rivera, our missionary in Peru. Lori Cordero, Diane, Elder Diane's sister. Linda Colon, my sister-in-law. Jet, Susanna's cousin, a young boy who has multiple tumors in his brain. Liz Torres' friends. Nelly, Zito, Corey, Anna, who needs salvation, Sierra, Ronnie's daughter, Nelson, Dory's daughter, Titi Dory's daughter is doing much better, thank God, she had the COVID. Louis Lassen is doing much better, I saw him in church yesterday, or Sunday rather. Uh, my wife's hairstylist, Sophia, who lost her son. Victor Cataquit's son who needs a job, our sister Cookie Quinones, and so many others, maybe some that are on here that I, I didn't read. But we will pray. Father in heaven, we just come to you in the precious name of Jesus. We thank you for your amazing hospitality. You brought us into the kingdom, we who were totally unqualified. Our lives, our past, our sins disqualified us from ever having access to a holy God. And yet your blood covers us. You prepared us. You washed our hands and cleansed our hearts. You purified us. And Lord, we have access to you because of the amazing hospitality of your son. Oh Lord, we pray for these who we have mentioned. Lord, you know each and every one of them. Evelyn, Cookie, and the Manson. Lord, Pastor Jean, Frank Gurdy's aunts, Maribel's grandson, Esther Neal, Jovan as he drives, given traveling mercies. Touch Mary Rivera. If, she, if she's to live, if this is a miracle that you're about to perform, then do it, Lord, in the name of Jesus. For my sisters, Ruthie and Rosie, my brother, Jorge David, for my pastor Raul, for Beverly Peterson's sons Keith, for missionary Valerie Rivera, for missionary Mina, and for missionary Pastor Rebecca. Lord, bless them. Lori Cordero, my sister-in-law, Linda Colon, Jet, Susanna's nephew, heal that brain, Lord. Liz Torres' friends, especially Anna, she needs salvation, oh God. Sierra, Ronnie's daughter, 
Nelson, as he goes through this time, Lord, bless him and strengthen him. Thank you for healing Doris, and thank you for healing Louis Lassen. Lord, strengthen Sophia. Provide a job for Vic the Catechate's son. Heal Cookie Quinones. And Lord, we present to you all those that are in need of healing and strength and salvation. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. God bless you and be well and know that the that the Lord is with you and that the Lord will provide for you according to his riches and glory. Give your life to Christ and he can make all the difference in the world. Find a church nearby you and get there. A lot of churches are opening now. If you're vaccinated, you can go anywhere, but keep your mask on. It's a good, it's a good practice. Um, forget about the rest. 